Um, hi everyone, uh, today is kind of a, a photography blog about uh, what Nikon has just brought out. Nikon has brought out, somehow they managed to bring out a whole new lens without anybody knowing about it. Um, it's the Nikon 40mm f2.8 uh, and if you go onto the Nikon website or imaging.nikon.com uh, you can see it here. It's a, it's a very small little lens, which would probably go well with like the Nikon 50mm 1.8 or something. It's probably roughly about the same size there. Um, certainly in focal length, it, it's roughly the same. But what this one is, this one is a micro uh, or a macro lens, whichever kind of terminology you want to use, which means you can get super close to your subjects. Now, I've got a macro lens, which is the Nikon um, 105mm f2.8, and I once had the Sigma uh, 105 f2.8 as well, and I've played with the 60mm uh, f2.8. So they're always, for some reason, 2.8s, the macros that I've used. Um, and they've always been very, very good, and this looks like a no exception. If you ever, ever figure out how to read uh, MTF charts, nobody actually understands what they mean. Uh, spatial frequency, sagittal, meteoronial. I've n no one knows what that means. But all we know is that the higher up they are and the more straight they are, the better they are. Full stop. And this one is performing phenomenally. Um, if you look at that, just going straight along there, it looks great. So what this kind of dip here means is that maybe just at the very edges, there might be a slight drop in contrast. Um, but that's, that has nothing compared to what some lenses you get where they're just all over the place. In fact, if you looked at my Nikon 20mm f2.8, it would be just bonkers. It'd be crazy and it wouldn't make any sense at all. It'd be lines all over the place. Um, but yeah, the better the lens, the higher these... Uh, I think the red is like your contrast and the other one is your sharpness. Um, and it also, it does it like at its maximum aperture, f2.8, and then it also like stopped down about three stops. So it's at f8 as well. Somewhere around about there and that's the different numbers there. Uh, for that. Nobody, still nobody really understands it. Um, it looks like a fairly simple lens if you look at the actual glass in it as well. So price-wise, it's coming out super cheap. All I've seen is it on the American website saying it's like about $270, which if it comes over here as £270, it's like, oh, it's a bit expensive. Um, I would probably rather get the 50mm f1.4 because that's probably around about the same price, if, if not a little bit cheaper. Somewhere around about there. Um, but if this comes out over here at £150, then I would say that would be a pretty good lens. But the, the real question is, why would you go for a 40mm lens? Now, if you've already got the Nikon 50mm f1.4, f1.8, or even a, a Sigma, any of those, or I think Sigma also does a macro version as well, would you bother getting this? I don't think you would. I don't think you would. The, the, this is just too close in focal length to the other stuff. Also, with it being such a short focal length, that if you're doing macro stuff, you are effectively going to be like right up to it. It's going to be right in front of you. So if you're taking a photo here, you will be there. At least with my 100mm lens, I've got a little bit of distance. It's one-to-one -one macro capability. It's still super close. It's only like 31 centimeters away from the actual subject. So which is probably only from like here to there, uh, where the camera is. But with this 40mm, it's going to, you're effectively going to be touching it. Now, so that means shooting stuff like bugs, insects, spiders, total no-no, because you're going to be, your face is going to be too close to them. Um, it's, it's going to be a bit too scary for that. But uh, maybe for food, uh, it might work if you need a slightly wider angle than the, the very super mega shallow depth of field that you get with the 100mm lens, then it might work, work there. Um, being 2.8, uh, it means it's a nice bright lens, but obviously not nearly as bright as the... Uh, there's a 35mm f1.8, uh, which is a DX... Oh, no, that's the main thing. If you notice, it's a DX lens, so it only works on the smaller cameras, but it is an AFS lens, so it will work on every camera that there is. If you've got the cheapest Nikon camera, that will work absolutely fine. So if you don't have a 50mm already... Would I recommend this? Probably not. Probably not. If you really need a macro, I would say go for the 90 millimeters and up. 
or I think Nikon even does an 85mm one, which has VR, I think? Or it's got a 100mm one that does VR, but that's about £600, so that, that's kind of totally out of the different price range. Um, so it's just a bit of an odd lens, which doesn't really fit anywhere. Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe some food photographers that need the super sharpness that you can get with this uh, micro uh, Nikkor lens. But, um, yeah, might be good for film, for video. If you're doing video stuff, obviously it won't work if they bring out, if you put it onto a Nikon D3S doing video, because you'll just have the circle in the middle. But if you put it on the D7000 or any of the, or D3100, it'll be a super sharp lens for doing video, and you'll probably get some great shots, close up shots with that. Um, but again, you've got to realize that the closer you get to something, the more your vibrations in your hand really are magnified uh, in the image that you're shooting. Uh, so, um, personally, I would probably say go with the 105mm VR, but that is totally out of the price range. I don't really see the point of it. Uh, that's the only thing. If any of you can see where you think that this lens would be, like, let's even have a look at its sample images that they've given us. Food. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, close up to a strawberry kind of thing. And you still get super shallow depth of field. A fairly rubbish image of a drip there. Uh, portraits. Yeah, you could use it. I'd probably recommend the 50mm though. Like, see when you've got the 50mm of 1.4 and you've stopped it down to 2.8, it is super sharp. Like, if you were to look at the MTF charts of the 50mm f1.8 or even 1.4, these would all look rubbish. They're like, oh my god, these are rubbish, but that's when it's shooting at f1.4 or 1.8. And once it's at f2.8, I would say it's probably as sharp, if not sharper than that. So don't look at that and just think, oh my god, it's going to be crap compared to other things. You've always got to think about its actual maximum aperture. Um, next one, done, yeah, another couple of portraits. Okay, so they haven't really given you a huge variety. Um, of images to play with, yeah, flowers, flowers, kids, um, and stuff there. Um, oh, another thing you've got to note, when you get as close as possible to something, it doesn't stay technically at an f2.8. So, for example, these super macro, like, super close-up ones is f4.2. Um, if you go to that one, fairly close as well, is 3.2, and here's normally at 3.2. You'd normally be thinking, why are they not at uh, 2.8? Does it have a faster shutter speed, and you could have a, a lower ISO? But uh, that's one of the things, is that the closer you get to something with a macro lens, the less of an actual aperture it is. It, I'm still not 100% sure of the kind of physics behind it. Um, but yeah, could tell me if any of you are, are really thinking about buying this lens and and what you think you're going to use it for. I'd be interested to hear it. Cheers. Bye-bye.